Now this diagram is aimed at showing us the distribution of the coronary arteries. But first of all, just a bit of orientation. This is the area of the left atrium up here. And the right atrium would be in this area here. This is the right ventricle. And this is the left ventricle. So going into the right atrium, carrying blood down from the top part of the body, this would be the SVC, the superior vena cava. This is the arch of the aorta, carrying blood out from the left ventricle. And this is the main pulmonary trunk, carrying blood to the lungs, quickly dividing into the left main pulmonary artery, and we can't see it because it's behind the aorta, the right main pulmonary artery. And the first two arteries that leave the aorta are the coronary arteries. And it's the coronary arteries that are taking the blood to the areas of the myocardium. And first of all, we see that there is a left coronary artery leaving the aorta. And this is the main branch of the left coronary artery. And we see that this goes down here. This is sometimes called the anterior interventricular branch, but most times it's simply called the left anterior descending or the LAD, left anterior descending artery and that's going down the front. It's anterior exactly as it says. But then leaving here, we have another branch going down that way, and that's called the diagonal branch. This is the diagonal branch of the left coronary artery. And we also see that the left main coronary artery quickly divides into the lad, the left anterior descending, but you'll notice it also divides into this one here. And this is the circumflex artery. And it's hard to draw in a diagram, so what I've done is dotted lines means that the artery is going round the back of the heart. So the circumflex artery is going round the back to the posterior surface of the heart. So this is the circumflex artery looping round to supply the back wall of the heart. And there's a significant branch from the circumflex artery called the left marginal branch of the circumflex artery. So this is the marginal branch of the circumflex artery. So the main branch of the left anterior descending was the diagonal branch here. From the circumflex going round the back, this main branch here is the marginal branch of the circumflex artery, taking blood to the left side of the heart. And the right coronary artery we see is leaving the aorta separately. Here's the right coronary artery. And we notice, well we don't notice, I haven't drawn it on, let's draw it on now. There's a branch from this goes across this way. And this branch is called the atrial branch. So this is the atrial branch going off towards the right atria, or the right atrium rather. And the end part of this artery is called the uh, sinoatrial node branch. So this part here is the sinoatrial node branch because, as the name implies, it takes blood to the sinoatrial node, which is the pacemaker of the heart. But going down here, this is the right coronary artery, taking blood over the anterior surface of the right ventricle. So the right coronary artery coming down here, with various branches going off 
to perfuse this area of the myocardium. And we notice there's a branch leaving near the bottom part of the anterior portion of the right coronary artery. And this branch here is the marginal branch of the right coronary artery. So that is the marginal branch. And we also notice that the right coronary artery goes down and underneath, round the back of the heart, along here. So that's the continuation of the right coronary artery on the back side of the heart. And we notice that there's a major branch coming off the right coronary artery called the uh, posterior interventricular branch of the right coronary artery. So the myocardium is dependent on the blood supplied by the coronary arteries for its oxygen, for its nutrients, and to get rid of its metabolic waste products. Despite the fact that the heart is full of blood, the myocardium is not getting its blood from the blood going through. It's not getting its oxygen from the blood going through the heart, through the chambers of the heart. It is dependent on the coronary arterial system being patent. And these arteries aren't very wide, relatively. And the level of collateral circulation is not that extensive. Now this is the most common pattern of coronary arteries. A few people there are variations, but this is the most common arrangement of the basic coronary arteries. But now we notice here there's atheroma in the left anterior descending branch. That can lead to ischemia in the area of myocardium normally supplied. And if this develops into an actual thrombus, if there's a coronary arterial thrombosis, then the blood supply to the anterior portion of the left ventricle can be cut off altogether, resulting in what we call an anterior infarction. Or there could be atheroma causing thrombus formation in the circumflex branch that would infarct the lateral side of the heart especially if it was further up here because it could affect any part of the coronary artery the narrowing and the thrombosis that would cause what we call a lateral myocardial infarction and indeed as this often goes over towards the right side there could be some right ventricular infarction as well but typically a thrombosis in the left anterior descending leads to an anterior left ventricular infarction and a thrombus in the circumflex artery leads to a lateral infarction. But I think you can see if there's a significant thrombus in the main left coronary artery that can cause an anterior and a lateral, an anterior lateral, very large myocardial infarction. Because if this main artery becomes blocked off, blood's not going to get down to the lad or around the circumflex either. And likewise, if there's an infarction in the right coronary artery, because we see that the right coronary artery goes down the right side, so here we would expect a right-sided infarction but more commonly you can get infarct in thrombus causing infarction down in the lower parts of the right coronary artery and we see that the right coronary artery is supplying largely the bottom part of the heart so infarction in the right coronary artery often causes what we call inferior myocardial infarctions. So patent coronary arteries, that's good. The myocardium gets plenty of oxygen. Atheroma, by far the most common cause of coronary arterial thrombosis. 
occluding the blood supply from a particular area of myocardium, potentially resulting in myocardial infarction. If there's myocardium with ST elevation, your job is to get rid of this thrombus as soon as possible. When you get rid of the thrombus, the blood will go back to the area of previously infarcted myocardium. And the quicker you can do that, the more myocardial cells you will rescue, the better the prognosis for your patient will be.